versus Team Liquid. Grand Finals, game three. It's game three, and these people got places to go, millions to win. Liquid and OG are already knee deep in their draft. I'm showing by Pile I Die and Febby. Gentlemen, we are already into game three, and it's the exact same first phase bans as the previous game. Mag, AA, IO, banned by Liquid. Leshrac, Alchemist, Chen, banned by OG. And then Liquid scoop up a Rubik and a Tidehunter, and OG have a Enchantress and a Tiny. Yes. This time around, OG is like, all right, well, you're giving us the Enchantress. Let's see if you can beat it. Yeah. And the Rubik, the first pick by Rub Rubik, the Liquid, uh, which is Rubik, I think it kind of blocked their potential Magnus draft from OG because OG loves that hero. So I think that's what that Rubik. But they did ban the Max. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see that. <laughs> I forgive you, Fabio. I'm kidding. But I'm, now I mean, I'm mean thinking like maybe they try to ban for the Tide Hunter, maybe. Oh uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm a little. I'm feeling the Liquid draft is a little. It's a bit awkward. It's this thing when you pick you pick this tide, right? Like it's a very high tier pick because I mean Ravage is always gonna just stun everyone, but in general that hero struggles versus Ench, and uh, he usually doesn't get a very good lane. So like Tiny will deal a lot of damage to him. He right. struggles because what the pure damage from Impetus is too much or oh yeah yeah you just get chunked. Like you can't lane versus him. Like that's, that's already a problem. Like you can't put the tide versus Ench, so that feels bad. Yeah. And, so and like. 50% of the reason why Tide gets picked is because of the Ravage and the other yeah. 50 for the tankiness, but Enchantress just removes the tanky part of the Tide. So right. Yeah. And generally, whatever t lane Tide goes into, like he starts with like 48 base damage or something, so it's just hard, it's just hard to do anything. Yeah, and especially after the last game too, I was thinking if Liquid is going to re-pick these long ultimate cooldowns, because OG seems to be playing so fast. I guess like they like talk themselves over and kind of regroup. So you're saying that's a reason why the Enigma in the last game may not have been too great, because that black hole cooldown was a bit of a limiting factor for Liquid to be able to match that breakneck pace that OG were setting. I don't know. Normally, like it, it would have been fine because OG had no tower hitter. They only had like heroes that could kill people, like Monkey King, Omni, Ember. They don't hit towers at all. So even if they group up, if Liquid doesn't react like five heroes, they're gonna lose out eventually, right? Ah, uh, okay, but, I see. Yeah. No, I, think I, think, I think that game also just comes down to a lot like when you lose three lanes, it's just very hard to play. <laughs> Imagine like, that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, because they had counter like matchups. They see a Omnite, but they pick a Lifestealer and like a hero I saw a TA, they pick an Ember. Yeah. Even though it didn't end up laning that way, but still, they thought that they had these counters in mind. Yeah, and you end up losing three lanes, you have an Enigma Tide, and you like your first couple of ultimates don't like kill them all. You are just it's just trouble for you, man. It's just gonna be hard. So I hope Liquid now like they really really try to counter lanes. Like the difference here with the OG Ench this game and like the first game is like what Liquid used to counter Ench, it's all banned out. Like the Shen is gone, the Meepo is gone. So I mean I'm hoping they have uh, they have a backup plan they for the Enchantress. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure they do too, because... Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not sure. Like, this Tide Hunter is very awkward. And we'll see. Yeah. So then, why is Magnus continuing to be first phase banned then? Because, like, they haven't even... We saw Enchantress be exposed in game one. Mm. We saw that you could beat it. You would know that OG would be like, all right, I'm going to ban out the Meepo and the Chen, because that's what beat my Enchantress. Liquid are still not willing to give up that Magnus. Why is that? I, I'm not... I, I guess, like, they have more... Like more strats in mind for this end. Okay, that's what I'm guessing. Cause I I have like my personal feeling is that they should be able to play against the Magnus. Right. OG Magnus is especially annoying too it because is, that plays it, not <laughs> yeah. the position for. Usually when there's a Magnus, you can like fast tempo and like have a, such a huge advantage from the early mid game. But since offlaner plays it from OG, like it's pretty hard to do that. So like we're gonna pick up an Ogre Magi. Technically another possible way to deal with Enchantress. You can yeah. give your team attack speed with the Bloodlust and you have plenty of magic damage to try to burn through her HP pool and since you don't have to deal with the Untouchable. And OG gonna pick up a Faceless Void. Yeah. And a Grimstroke that's amazing against Tide. Like these... Yeah. The, no, this oh. is a <laughs> very yeah, hard Tide game. Yeah, it's gonna be a very hard Tide game. Now, Ogre is one of the few heroes that can actually like solo versus Ench for a long time. Um, like especially if you like you're really on point with last hits, like you can potentially win that lane. And even if you played as a five, like you're not really taking damage that much from her hitting you. So like you can sustain a long while. But eventually, like you're you're gonna get kicked out. So like I'm just waiting for this magic pick here that they're 
they're preparing for. So you're definitely leaning heavily OG so far. I mean, I want to see this, because this is supposed to be Liquid's strongest pick right now. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like this tide is very awkward. <laughs> like, OG, they were very ready for this tide item. Yeah? No real surprise here. Liquid go back to the Templar Assassin. And to be fair, the loss in the previous game was her first loss on the main stage. Yeah. So it's not like the hero is bad by any means, but Liquid are definitely kind of uh, running the same playbook over and over again for Weehaw, which, you know, people had a lot of critiques for Epicenter. They just kept oh. giving Weehaw win range, and you're like, what are you going to do about it? But they kept winning. I mean, they, they didn't win the finals, though, did they? That's true, true. <laughs> no, no, this is I... the finals of TI also. Yeah, because I wanted to say, like, I hope Liquid, like, really relax with this uh, Templar Assassin now. Like, either pick it super late or uh, don't pick it at all. Because uh, a lot of... Uh, I'm guessing they're gonna ban Monkey King now, so like they don't have to deal with that. But uh, that, yeah, because that hero, it's not the same hero. Like before, she used to win the lanes, and then like farming, like you're more okay with farming. If you lose the lane and then you go to farm jungle, like versus a team like OG, that can be rough. And it's not like Liquid have any particularly strong roamers to help her accelerate that lane that quickly. Ogre Magi most likely gonna be played in a core role. And Rubik, you know, Telekinesis' cooldown is way too much to expect to get any ganks on the mid lane. It should be a tied 3 and Yeah, yeah probably an Ogre 5. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, because no, I'm, I'm thinking OG will switch this Tiny to a 4 now. I, I don't think that might. That's one of Tiny's probably worst matchups in TA. Like, in how they, also how Thompson wants to play. Right. Because he wants to run in the. Like, he just wants to run on the other side. And he's just running in traps. Hmm, what's a good Thompson hero other than Monkey King? Because for sure it has to be bad. Yeah. Maybe Pogna? Uh, hmm. yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious to see it. I mean, he might just play the Tiny again. They, they did win that game before. No, no, I mean, actually, they lost the game. They could have won that game, the first game, yeah, where it was I Tiny think, versus Tiny. I think, like, this Tiny Void combo, Tiny has to be played on, like, carry or mid. Yeah, it does help a lot. Yeah. Because, like, the Agony of Daedalus is so great game breaking. It can't be played on off lane. Even Liquid are baffled, burning a lot of their reserve time for this final ban. They really want to protect this Templar Assassin. I really want to see what Liquid are thinking too. I think they're talking about like if the monkey is worth banning or not. Yeah. Like if yeah, because Tiny offlane or Enchantress offlane. I think they they're saying they like they can deal with it. Bruh. Okay. Uh, I finally got the monkey, the monkey king. A lot of deliberation for that one. Now they got 30 uh, seconds to pick a Juggernaut. Okay. It, it's it's all right. It, like he'll be bloodlusted. He'll get a lot of last hits. Eventually, though, you will get kicked out by this Ansh, I believe. I mean, it's not the dream pick, but it's playable. And I guess against this Faceless Void, you may not have to be too concerned about your healing ward getting killed. Yeah. No, it's a decent healing ward. I mean, Ansh can be annoying. She buys yeah, a lot she, of like uh, ranged items. Yeah. Yeah, look, you can definitely stop. Okay, oh, there we go. The you, you call it, right? Yeah, I call it. You call it. You call it. That'd be called it. It's it's really great with Grimstroke. The other team cannot hit the uh, the Phantoms. In, the, what is it? Phantoms Embrace? The yeah, if you decrepify the unit, then yeah. you just literally can't hit it off. And another reason why Grimstroke was likely picked is because it's a uh, silence that can't get purged off by Kraken Shell. Yeah. You yeah. put that on the Tidehunter. No, this, is, this is the nightmare <laughs> Tidehunter game. Like, I, he, if he just gets to Arcane Boots Blink or like Face Boots Blink. You'll be impressed. No, but that, that's all he has to do. Like, don't expect anything more from this Tidehunter. I mean, yeah, he might not feed as much as last game, but yeah, his impact is probably going to be minimal. All right, then, gentlemen, I appreciate the thoughts, but I want to hear one last thought, and it's going to come from Purge with the last word. Winning uh, Grand Finals is a really tough task at TI, and it's also because you have to change your strategy partway through the Grand Finals as the heroes you get comfortable with get banned out. Liquid has been really doing a great job with TA. It's a hero that they haven't picked a huge amount in the past, at least recently, but during the last stages of this tournament, it's been really effective. But in last game, OG showed that they had a great counter with Ember Spirit, having Tiny on support, and other things like that made things really effective. And now OG gets to go back to their regular comfort heroes. They've got Enchantress, they've got the Tiny Void combo, 
tempo. Having Grimstroke as the support for Pugna or for uh, No Tail hasn't really been contested, but still accomplishes what they need. And on the other side, Liquid grabbing Jug. That should give them a strong laning stage and the ability to kill Enchantress because they can do lots of magic damage. Um, on, on top of that, they still get Rubik, they still get Tide, and they have the, the TA so they can fall back on it. But we'll see if they can still win with the TA either way, despite the enemy picks. With that said, let's throw it over to the casters for game number three. Thanks, Purge. Game three ready to go between OG and Liquid. Series stands one to one at the moment. We're seeing some similarities in the drafts as well as, of course, some, some little changes and alterations. But still, the biggest thing that I want to talk about, Fog, is Liquid. They're believing in some of the heroes that really did struggle last game. They're sticking with like these Tide Hunters, these yeah. TAs. Do you like that, or does that sort of maybe scare you a bit in the sense that are Liquid running out of options? I would, I would be a little scared, right? Like. You have to look at this, and they're, they've literally picked Tempo Assassin in all the games. And OG, oh, they have to know this is coming. They have heroes that they've been preparing for it, preparing versus one. We saw it, how hard they were able to play last game and how fast that pace they were trying to set. That's the one thing that I saw Liquid, they do back away from this game, though, right? They didn't go for all greed. They have a Juggernaut who can fight early. They have the Ogre Magi, who's a stronger five position. And then they have this Rubik that can also make plays around the map. GH, he tried his heart out in the last game as an Enigma, it but it's, it is an Enigma. So you're going to be slower paced because you have to play around your cooldowns. So at least they've addressed that a little bit here on the side of Liquid, but still do have to be a bit concerned for sure, Seth. Go for a bit of a poke on him, but OG, they have the numbers there. Just gonna turn around, look to body block up, Miracle. Miracle holding onto the Blade Fury for now, now pops him just before the toss comes into play. And we'll get him back underneath the tower, but overall definitely some things for Liquid to be scared about in the draft. You saw as well, they had to kind of pick their poison right. They have the TA, it was, well, are we gonna... Are we going to land against a Monkey King from Dobson or a Pugna? They opt Pretty for the much. Monkey King ban, but does mean that the Topson Pugna will be there to cause some havoc with the TA in the mid lane. That decrepify in the landing stage each wave is not going to be fun That's for Wee Hard to deal with. No, it allows you to secure pretty much Almost not, not all the range group denies, but you get a lot of those range groups. Ana will be able to get himself that rune. I'm going to try and abuse the fact that he hasn't got that time walk for quite a long yeah, time. Sure. In 15 seconds, he'll be fine. He's able a lot to get of pressure. Back. Yeah. Takes a lot of damage. But no tell. Same build as last game. He has the clarities as well as or the tangles as well as the self. He will sub that one up and there's two bounties left. Two there bounties. is yeah, the liquid will be able to claim that there's up top, but you will imagine that, that bottom one will eventually be picked up by OG. So overall getting the three of the four spicy. to start this game off with. See how these mid creeps. Topson will be able to get the one for one. So he gets that range creep deny as well as securing his range creep. And as well, gonna get a, maybe another two denies as well. Oh my god. Three denies on the first wave there. And he's crazy oh, oh, oh. of course. Definitely gonna be a lane where we are gonna have to keep our eyes on as we could seriously see Topson break ahead significantly of the CS of Weeha's TM. And a very interesting starting item. I don't think I've ever seen that. It's a crown. On the I like it. The mid lane, right? Well, it's sort of built to, towards eventually getting, what, a, a rod of ATOS, do you think? Uh, Veil? Veil? No, Veil Veil Veil, right. I think Veil yeah. is really nice because it gives you that armor that you're lacking as a Pugna when you're playing versus TA. Yeah, very nice. What were your teammates? Yep. The tiny, the Grim Strokes, a lot of magical to offer when you start making those moves that we know that OG's going to want to do after seeing how they played in game two. Yeah, I mean, it, does, it works well with everybody except for the Enchantress, right? Even Void, your time lock is magical. Sure, that's it. Very slight, but every little yes. type of application. He's going to have levels in it, so it's going to hurt. Yeah. Thompson just waiting to try to get all these ranges. Five and six. To the two and one of Weeha right now. It's just, I mean, as with ooh, bottom lane. Kuroko is tanking the. Yeah, he's yeah, he should be pressure. fine. Just doing his job here, trying to make sure that the pressure isn't applied to Miracle. Yep. I'm mostly going to be looking at mid, just because I'm going to. I'll keep. I'll keep. I'll be keeping tabs of those range creep denies for us. As the the side lanes, we'll be able to get a decent amount of farm on both of those carries on Liquid and OG. But this is the more important thing is that my control is not getting super shut down in this one up top. Unlike the last game where it was just chain death for him. From the start of the lane, from pretty much level one, he died on back to back to back. Oh, we'll see we are be able to get the two minute rune. Not really one that's gonna help him in the lane though, just an invis. Yep. Not the, the DD or the illusion that could have maybe helped him get a, a bit of a catch up in this matchup. It's Thompson. Just continuing to keep the edge as this hero matchup is very, very painful to play in the lane. The yeah, we have, just have to be careful how he even controls his side blades. He just, he just keeps getting it. all these denies built up onto him there. He'll secure himself one of those range creeps now, but yeah, eight denies on the Pugna. 
But bottom we see Savvy. He's not able to get the most down here, but he's still putting pressure on. He's got seven last hits, but look how low he's got Miracle. Actually forcing the salve, and Kuroki has no regen left either. So no regen on either of them. We see also he's gone for the point in the enchant this game. In the laning phase, because you're playing versus Bloodlust, you can be able to dispel that one quite easily, and if he gets an option of a decent creep, of course. I mean, in this lane, is is there a chance that Seb can get caught out by a, a Blade Fury play? Or most of the time, will Seb just have the heals to, to stay alive? He should have more than enough health and more yeah. than enough healing. Like, the Blade Fury, it's a decent amount of damage if you have enough stuns, but it's just one stun from the Fire Blast, which means he's going to be able to get his heal and a Fairy Fire off. So, once that heal kicks in, the spin's not enough damage. Seeing top lane. And uh, able to, to match the free farm of Miracle down bottom. Getting Both carries getting a good start in their safe lanes. A couple more denies on Ana. He's already actually used an early courier too. I think Thompson made the call. He's like, I don't really need the courier too early on, and you guys could have bring you some regen top, and they did. They brought Tyangos and Clarities. And we will see. Helm of Iron will picked up. He's going straight for that veil on the Pugna. That's, it, I mean, it's going to be crazy early how, get, how he gets it, because he started with this crown. Very cool approach here coming out from Thompson. And look how tanky he is too. Nine armor, when he's next to his tower, he's sitting at 12. So those that harass him from Weeha will not be as significant. Seeing Weeha trying is, is sort of the, the best approach he can against the Pugna. Every time the Decrepify is being used, to try and close the gap, get some top of Thompson, uh, forcing Thompson to sort of stray a little bit back from the creeps. Pressure's on and top. Looking for GH, look at those bashes. Stroke won't hit, so GH will be fine to walk off. Mind control, turning and beating down onto No-Tail. In return, it's no tell. Well, allowed to keep his distance. We'll be able to do so. Mind control, of course, getting good farm. Up breaks, top. Breaks the out with the gush there. Mid lane, though, we are. It's been caught out by a bit of a move from Jarex. He's trying to switch the mango in to go for a mango refraction play, but that's six seconds far too long. Jarex setting up for Thompson in mid and making sure that that middle lane continues to be a nasty place for the Weeha TA to be. Bounty Rune's gonna be spawning as well. Jarek's gonna try to at least claim one for his team here. We'll be able to get one, Miracle will be able to get the other one Ooh. as top. And Mind Control's able to get behind the tower and get no tower. Yep. Push them away, GH. Oh, he feels, kills it. He knows that Anna's got the time war. Doesn't want to let Anna have the chance of going for it. Does mean that Anna has the time war to try and turn and chase towards GH. Another, no another gust from Mind Control will be there though. Slows Anna down and GH will be able to walk out alive. This is where Jarex now. This is a really important play here. If he can get this set up and kill Weeha in the mid lane, Weeha is actually already getting turned with the veil. Is it enough? Ooh, he's very close. Jarex is already running over. I mean, Weeha. He just used the TP to come back mid. He's, he's going for the walk back. Jarex knows. There's no shrine available top either. It was used already by the side of Liquid. He's just going to try and get a little bit out of the jungle whilst he has the mana to play around with a fraction of meld. There's a glyph available though. Thompson and Jarex are set up. There's a glyph and it's the five minute siege wave. So Thompson, he's going to look to just take this mid tower here. GH showing up to try to pull the creep aggro. We'll only get the one creep aggro though for now. So this tower, they will be forced to pop glyph to defend. They can turn towards GH. Jarex is down the high ground. Fails to be out onto GH. Avalanche for Jarex is to try and close the gap to Crepify into the life drain. He just gets slowly drained down and out. He'll turn with a stick charge and a fade bolt. But GH's fate is sealed. It's Topson. Jarex is still in the area. He has a toss back. To he's, he has a dust too, so he's waiting. Yep. Thought maybe he melded there. And keeping Weeha away from the lane, away from any chance of finding farm. I, I, I love this going for this Veil build on Topson. It's super clever being able to get it so early on. It's just applying so much extra pressure that you normally would not be able to do as a Pugna. You see, I mean, still Jarex just toying with him. Stopping Weeha from getting close. It's gonna take a bit of damage. We'll toss Weeha back into the Ancients. Avalanche as well, and with the Black Dragons beating down on Weeha, Jarex is able to trade a good bit of damage. Might go down here though. GH is walking over, but in the meantime, Ana and no tail up top. Oh, Jarex Jar is gonna go for the TP, and that's what they do not see him. If uh, Telekinesis was still it's unavailable, yeah. so they wouldn't have been able to catch him anyway. Uh, OG, this mid lane, tier one tower, they're pushing it down. Thompson's able to play such a fast pace. This Miracle. is Pugna versus TA America, but he loves bottom. Oh my goodness. The creeps, the neutral creeps actually turned onto him while he was getting impetus. He almost died farming that, that uh, hard camp. Well, Thompson, he's dragged down the tower, wants to lose the spray out, TP's out of there. Continuing to toy with Liquid, drawing the attention of four members of Liquid towards that mid lane. They don't get him, he's out to safety. And now Miracle Hoop, he's been having a pretty decent time in that bottom lane, 40 and six. Enchantress has hit six. We know what happens when Enchantress hits six. You get forced out of lane. It's exactly what's happened now to Miracle. 
push to the jungle for the time being. He's gonna farm maybe under the tower here. He's actually camping here. He's pinging it out. He wants someone to rotate because he has the Omni. It's feeling that it could be a chance to find some action mid lane. The crap of five setups there. Jax is prepared with the dust. Weha cannot hide in the shadows. They see him every time and the tower goes down. And even it's in. Top lane mind control getting bashed up by Anna and no tail. Oh Jax have another time walk available in a second. Seb running himself away from Kura again into the trees. Gets the heal up but the Omni stands for a miracle. Will secure the kill down bottom. At the same time up top they find eventually mind control as tires as they continue the chase. An off laner for an off laner. And they're spamming the taunts because Miracle, he really wanted to hold on to Omni Slash there. He tried to just get the kill with the spin, but it was not enough damage. They're forced to actually throw the Omni Slash to bring down Seb. And Thompson is just able to pull so much attention towards this mid lane now. Yeah. He's feeling strong and confident with the brown boots, wind lace and veil. He can run around and, and just be such a nuisance. And the draft panel mentioned how hard of a Tidehunter game it was going to be. Mike control a decent start, but now he is completely shut down as mid. And get the ink spot stun onto we are. GH is there to help out. Another blast. Mind control heading over. He's only level four on the tide at this point. I think they thought he was higher level than that. Noto throws the silence on him, but it's only level four tide. And they're gonna live train him down. Slows there with a stroke of fate. We'll be able to crack his shell up. But Jarex with pixel perfect body blocking there. Well, I say that. Miracle's gonna come up with a blade fear. They punish Jarex for it. They do lose mind control. Support for an off lane. And you're just seeing Liquid. They're having to bring the whole team to mid lane to deal with the shenanigans of this Pugna. And immediately Miracle is now going to start getting pressured again too. He's even going to dig in front. He just dug in front of him. <laughs> They're having way he's, too much He's on feeling it. it, Thompson. They have on a free farming top, right? This is a Treads into Midas Void, who has pushed the tight under completely out of lane. And like we said, Mind Control, he's one in three the this Phantom Embrace, and that is, it's such a nasty combo to crepify Phantom Embrace. There is no counter. There is no counter. There is no counter. Well, until later. Then maybe when they get BKBs or something. Yeah. Oh, Thompson. Hey, they may. Leave it alone. May have to have a little too far this time. They surround him. Thompson will fall, finally. They're able to get that spooky little skeleton boy out of their half of the map. But, but look at him off. Look at where it's happening. He forces everybody to go from there, and that just solidifies OG to get more bounty wins. It hurts because they lose their core, but in a net worth advantage, yes. that actually favors OG. Oh, it's a 4K lead at 10 minutes in for OG. And we talked about Midas's. Midas Void coming out soon. Midas Enchantress is already finished. And they're just looking around to keep the pressure going. My control, one in three in the game again, and his game is not going to get easier. He's got an inventory. He TP's up top. He's going to look for the set of the toss back. My control still has not got that six in the ravage. GH has got his own level six. Jerex is going to look to set up one of him instead. They'll throw it back into the chrono, catching the two of them. OG, they just can't help themselves. They can't stop making plays. You can, I mean, you can just tell how much fun they're having in the game. Spamming the chat wheels, spamming the losers, running around making kills happen, and not stopping. Again, Thompson. So we saw them doing in the last game too, just looking around, running around. Where's Weeha is the question. That's who they want, as they know he's just gonna back up in jungle. This is getting pretty out of control already, a 5k advantage. They're finding Miracle. Thompson is gonna get stunned up. And the Miracle, he's got the Blade Fury and the Omni Slash to play around with. Soulmind's gonna lock the two of them down together as No Tail's looking to turn, moves in with the, the Inkling Silence. The Blade oh! Fury dead! The Ravage comes out! But they've already lost the two of them, they get No Tail in response. But now OG, they can turn and collapse onto Mind Control, surrounding the tide. Jarex and Thompson, Zeb, they're not gonna stop chasing this. A trap slow will come out, it doesn't matter. Thompson, another Decrepify Blast, secures him the triple kill. He's gone for another. They're not done yet, OG, GH. He's got the stolen ink swell. They'll keep their distance. Jarex closes the gap. GH is enchanted. Taken out. Ultra kill for Thompson. 11 minutes in. There is nothing that can stop this man. This is just getting just so out of it's a, look, look at the net worths. They almost have four of the five top net worths in the game. Miracle has no place to go in the game. He's running around trying to salvage the problems that are happening absolutely everywhere in the game because he's level seven is junk. But look at this hero damage. It's 12 minutes in and he has 10,000 hero damage. Absolutely. You know, this is just numbers that are unheard of this early on in the game. The Thompson Pugna, I mean, they took their chances right as we said in the draft. That Pick your poison. The Van the Monkey King, the top, the Thompson Pugna was always going to be left in. They've got to kill him. They've got to do something about it. They'll surround him. They've got the Blade Fury. They have got the stun. Thompson falling low. Put the stick charge. Tries to stab with the life driver. They kill him off. Big kill here for Liquid. Can they get more? The rest of OG have turned up. They'll focus down Miracle. 
Anna is coming in with the wraparound, and Anna, he's nearly got the Chronosphere back online. Liquid have to be a little careful how they approach this. Jarex forcing We Are away from the rest of his team. Miracle, he's trying to run. Chrono's going to be back up in five seconds. Quick tread switch and a time walk fall from Anna allows him to close the gap. If he wants to pop the Chrono for this, he will. There's three heroes, he's thinking about it. The Shrine has been used, they're healing up. Anna trying to find the perfect angle. No Tuts coming in with the wraparound. Mike controls back in. No Ravage though. Toss over, keeping them bunched together. Anna, he's still trying to, to see if he can find that perfect opportunity. He may not even need it. The Phantom Embrace, it's on Mike Control. The output of the damage for Sent Impetus is too much for Mike Control to withstand. And they've got a miracle. There's the catch. They'll get Miracle separated. He's shot down. He's silenced up. He did get the Blade Fury. Off, but the soul by control with the impetus is far too much for him to deal with. As OG, but, oh my god, they keep looking for more. They're just giving us the repeat of game two in the same exact area at the same exact time, too. It's like 12 minutes in, 10 heroes gathered around the ancients' areas. We has like, okay, well, I can't really fight this, I have to find my own time. We has actually gonna go for a blink dagger to try to match and be able to fight and be able to respond to OG's aggression. Look at the drag. Onto Jarrett with that telekinesis, oh, but again, God. OG, they just have the numbers here. Liquid are not ready to take these fights. This is just an absolute dismantling coming up from OG. They're, they're not giving them any room at all. And it's not this time like they have all these long duration ultimates. They're just they're just punishing them for everything. The Jug pick, he's not really farming at all. Weeha either. Everybody on the side of OG is farming perfectly fine. And they have Midas's. I mean, Miracle. He walks into lane. He oh, nearly dies immediately to the combo. Jarek did the miss. control on Thompson. Again, the Shrider with a full right out of But Jarek takes him out. My control. Pause the Ravage. Have they got the damage to finish these two up? Thompson's they don't. still alive. He's able to back off. And now again, Radiant the rest of OG's turns up. Steps in the neighborhood. Toss over for Jarek. Kuro and GHB focus the X well on Jarek. Does it hit Kuro? It doesn't matter. No tell. Has the stroke of fate, and it's enough alone. As he's now a 10k lead, three dead on Liquid, so again, OG will be able to reset, get those bounty runes if they want. They may just keep the pressure on Anna. Down bottom, he's trying to go head to head with Weeha. It's the one bash. There's more support coming in though, Jarex, as well as No Teller in the area. Weeha will get spooked and push back. And look at that, just it's a 10,000 10, gold lead. The nah. experience is even, the experience is even 10,000. What are they, look, look at these hero levels. A Thompson 13, Seb 12, Weeha's 11, but then I mean, look at this, it's all of OG at the top of the border with the levels, with the gold, with everything. So far in this game, they are just dictating the pace and giving no room to Liquid. They, all the moves are on their side of the map. Liquid, even if they do get some kills, it's all the way pushed back on their side already. And you really just have to admire this sort of domination. This isn't some sort of slow-paced farming beatdown. It's not this five-man push. It's just the want to fight, the coordination from OG, the team play, and the lineup that they have is working so beautifully against Liquid in game three, just as it did in game two. And it's leaving Liquid no chance to really turn things around. We are, he's got the blink dagger. But going for that blink first means that he doesn't have sort of that damage out, but the fight is being brought to him. And with the blink, if he turns and hits, he's not going to hit hard enough. I think he's trying to, just like I was saying before, he's trying to make up for the fact that they have nobody else who can really match this fighting pace of OG, but it's a TA into a tough, tough draft that he's against. They expect this Templar Assassin to be coming out, and they've been countering it yeah. time and time again. And all these heroes just deal with it incredibly well. I'm sorry, who, who do you go on as this TA? There's an Untouchable Enchantress. There's a Pugna with Decrepify. There's a Void with Time Walk. There's Phantom Embraces. There's... They just have all the answers, OG. And OG's... Look, Ana is pushing bottom by himself, while in the mid lane, they're taking that tower as well. Weeha is jungling the enemy jungle. This has gotten completely out of hand. OG just... It looks like they have Liquid's notebook and they're just looking through it. They're like, oh, this is where they're going to be next. This is what they're going to do next. They just have a perfect read of what Liquid's trying to do in the game. And Dagger and Thompson now on top of her. Of course, it's already very stacked item build. A veil and Ether Lens. They might just 17 minutes in. Thompson's just going to start poking high ground. He's got an Arcane Rune with his Nether Blasts. He's got the Aether Lens yet, like you said. And yeah, Tier 3 is going to start, start getting poked 17 minutes. We are... Uh, nearly approaching a 1,000 gold per minute lead to put the side of OG with this type of draft. And look what they, they're going to try their best to, to push this away. OG, they have Chronosphere. Look what's wrapping around. They've got a smoke, they've got the Ravage. Top tower is under Can they catch OG here? 
Jarex is the one standing up toward the front lines, waiting to see if something does happen. Tower's already dead. They're already working on their axes. And if Liquid's gonna, gonna make a move, they're gonna make it soon, but they're not gonna get the chance to. Jarex jumps in on top of mind control. Phantom embrace upon him. No chance for a Ravage, but he's back immediately. They know the only way that they can get caught is if it's from a wraparound. Jarex just waiting there in position. They even have an Ops. They even put down a Sentry to take out Liquid's vision too. Liquid has no, light, no vision of these backlines now. They're taking the racks. Absolutely perfect. 18 minutes in. My God. This is unbelievable. Two games in a row. But OG is just giving us the showcase of their lifetime. It's been like six or seven minutes since Liquid has been able to even find a kill. It's been GH just out of it. GH has been the one getting them, but it's not even these big ones because, like we said, they can't even get aggressive onto the map at all. As Seb just continues to stand in the base, he's a bit far forward here. If you get the multicast, Banner's gonna come in with a backup. They to grab a fight, keeping Seb safe. They'll pop the Ravage, they're trying to get on top of at least someone. They'll find No Tail. and a surrounded. He still has the Chrono. He gets the three of them. Tops is able to turn with the live drain. Miracle set. My control toss back into the Chrono, making it a beautiful format. Double kill for Thompson. He'll start to run them down one by one, pushing Liquid back towards the fountain. My control. It's a dieback effectively, no buyback available, still on cooldown for six minutes. They're, they're just playing on a totally another level right now. The way they're taking the fights, even the little things. The Omni Slash comes out on the Enchantress, Ana jumps in the tanks it, and then pulls the Omni Slash into his team. So the Miracle gets put in a really awkward position, gets caught in the Chrono, and like you said too, the toss into the Chrono. I've seen them do this like four times in the last game, or in this last game already. And Thompson just continuing to reign supreme in the game. He's constantly looking for these aggressive plays. Oh, quick link out from Weeha will mean that he won't die this time. But can they come back in this game? Liquid down 15k net worth, down a full set of racks before the 20 minute mark. 25 to 8 in Six favor of OG. 16,000 gold lead. They're going to get themselves at least three bounties, over 10,000 experience lead, and that Dota plus does say the 99% right now. So only a 1% right now for Liquid. It does feel like Ooh. that as well. As they do get the play field off in time, Ana. They actually get it. out. We are able to get in with a bling mouth. Can they get more out of this no tail? We'll pick up the rune. Oh has Thompson by his side, but Liquid, they're chasing. The Liquid move onto the high ground. Turn around there. Jarrett's in with the combo. The healing one is not enough to keep Miracle alive. Miracle's dead for over a minute. So OG. They can now go back to chasing for more. GH tries for the TP out. Seb finds him. Doesn't get enough damage in in time. GH will escape. Decrepifies there. Liquid, they do get in, take down a second as they'll find no time with the toss back. Avalanche for Jerry, oh catches the two of them. We have, he's got the invis, they don't have detection. They've got AoE. He's got so the we have, he's, with the refraction. And they will let him be. Who's going to be able will to blink, or is he? He's not, going, he's not going to be able to blink. He's not going to be able to blink. Thompson. The ward is down. He pops a fraction. He gets hit by the damage. He can't actually blink. Gets put back on the cooldown immediately. My God, these fights, I mean... Hey, look, look at that, Tops is 17, two, and seven. 17, two, and seven. 70, he's, he's making this look like the easiest game of his life. He really is. He's looking, he's yeah, looking. He, uh, he really is. I, it's, like, it's, hard, it's hard to even like point out all the other things, like how well Jarax is playing as well in this game. Just always being in the right place, getting these incredible toss combos, because Thompson, like you said, had 17 kills 17 at the 21 kills. minute mark. He's been involved in 24 broken. of the 28. Thompson, he really is He's the mid that everybody wants on their team. This is the pinnacle of the Dota 2 mid player. Especially for the carry player. Any carry looks at this and like, wow, I wish my mid player would go around killing everybody every five seconds. It's, it's looking pretty out of control here. As it's a 19,000 gold lead and they just keep this aggression. Liquid just can't even get, they can't even get their lanes pushed out in this game. All stacked up outside the base. OG keeping them trapped inside of there. If they have, they have everything ready. They have all their tools available to fight. They've got a run of HS on Seb now as well. Find the, troll, find the jump group with the Ravage. We it as well. Do they have the damage? Yeah, it's hard. They do. They kill on Thompson. There's a lot of money going the way of Kuroki, though. Can they get more out of this Omni Slash? Bouncing around Jarek. A buyback comes out for Thompson. He wants to rejoin the fight. As OG turns, they'll get one. Chrono. There's the setup again. Adam with a three man Chrono catches them all. Double kill for Adam. The top stuff disabled. Taking down Miracle. The Phantom embraces on Kuroki. They'll chase him up to the base. Triple kill for Adam. Two buybacks to come out from Liquid. But no Tide or Juggernaut 
available to offer their services for this defense. And they've already used everything. The Tidehunter Ravage, Chug Omni. I think they, I actually think Mind Control may have sold some of his items just to be able to purchase that Blink Dagger for the fight. And even then, they can't outcome. It can't even come close to coming out ahead of it. I mean, they, they got Thompson. They got that, him, but he's back. That was it. They'll get another jump in. Mind Control trying to commit. Jarrett's just turns with the Toss Avalanche combo. Mind Control out of the game once more. We are trying to jump in, find at least Thompson, but he's not going to get it. OG surround him, outnumber them, a toss up. Back to the grave, GH is dead, GG is called. OG take game three. And dare I say, it's a, even in a more devastating fashion than game two. It didn't look like it could get any worse for Liquid after that second game, but I think it just did. They have, I, I think they have to find a different type of draft. I don't think the Tidehunter plus the Templar Assassin can work when you're playing versus OG. They seem to just know exactly what they want to do versus it. With this Grimstroke, even with this Pugna, even with the Enchantress as well, I think you have to find something else for Liquid here. Otherwise, we could just have another replay in the next one. OG just seem to know exactly how they want to play around this. They end the game with a 1,000 gold per minute advantage over Team Liquid in the grand finals of TI. They have a 23,000 gold lead. I mean, let's, let's, look, let's look at some damage numbers too. Like you said, Thompson was involved in 28 of their kills. 17, 3, and 11, Thompson. He just had this explosive performance. This was unbelievable. And as you said, to do this in the grand finals, to do it twice, game two, game three, are they going to be able to do it in fourth game? If they do, they will secure themselves that championship title. One game away, OG, right now. Liquid, they've got to change things up entirely as the series stands at the moment two to one to OG.